So <clears throat> there's good news and bad news. The, the good news is I think lunch is after me. Um, <laughs> The bad news is everybody said everything that could possibly be said. We've talked about every different option. So I either have to agree or disagree with people as I go through this, which will be entertaining. Let me spend a minute. By the way, my name is George Simons. I'm the chief strategy officer at Nexan, sort of the new kid on the block there. I've um, been there about six months. And I wanted to give you a little background on Nexan. Some of you may remember the company a few years back. Uh, Bright Purple, Atabeast, Attaboy, Satabeast, Sataboy. Our, our image is a little changed since then, uh, a little cleaner. If you look at the logo, we don't have ghetto raid in purple, but yeah, and hopefully none of you are missing that. It's, it's really a transition we've made as a company, a more mature company, but really still focusing on our core business as we have. Um, we've been around roughly 13 years as today one of the leading independent storage vendors, uh, you know, over 33,000 systems out there, so a lot of experience with it. Our, our history is really in the dense storage space, right? Again, disk for backup, disk for archive, dense storage, how to put more drives in a small amount of space, but still deliver quality, reliability, all of those good things about it. We've expanded our business a couple of steps. The first one um, was acquiring an object storage company, and the most recent is actually moving more into primary storage um, with what we call our NST system, uh, unified, hybrid, and dense technology. So a broad set of offerings. We're 100% channel based, uh, one of the few companies today that still is, especially if you look at the size and volume that we have. It, we do drive a lot of satisfaction around our customers being happy and our partners happy. And so, you know, as, a, as an independent company, the way you succeed is people come back. And so we do a lot to focus on getting customers back. So. That's a little bit on Nexan. You've heard a lot of this today, and I'm really going to focus on the combination of capacity and performance, right? Because capacity is what drives our business. It's what, you know, what keeps us happy. If people need to buy storage, right? They need more and more capacity. It's why we're in the storage business in that sense. And the performance, um, you know, it used to be you had to go down to Wall Street to find the financial services company that cared about getting that little bit more performance so they could get a trade done a little bit faster, and it didn't matter how much it cost. What you've heard this morning is performance matters in a lot of other applications these days. Virtualization has driven the need for performance because of the uncertainty of IOs, because you can't tune your system for the application anymore. You've got to react to the application that drives IOPS. Analytics, and we're starting to see more and more, whether it's big data or whether it's just file-based analytics, there's a lot of analysis being done that's driving the need for performance. Um, cloud services driving performance, if you listen to what Dave Wright was talking about. Databases, everybody's database now needs more performance. So all this is driving performance, but the other side of it is, in my view, is these aren't all created equal. Not all of them need a million IOPS. Not all of them have the same needs. Not all the markets have the same needs as we go forward. So, you know, you've heard about SSDs from just about everybody, absolutely where the industry is going. Um, but it's, it doesn't solve all problems, right? At least today, at least for the next set of years, it's not solving all problems. Uh, it was an interesting number. I don't necessarily believe it's exactly 5 to 10 percent. Um, ESG Labs with Cloud Physics tried to analyze what workloads benefit the most from SSDs, and they came down to 5 to 10 percent. I actually think it's larger than that, but you know, we're not talking 50 percent when you look at it. And when you look at your need for performance, right, you have to look across, is it IOPS I need? Is it latency that's important to me? What happens? Under duress, what happens to performance? What happens when I get near capacity to performance? So you have to look at all aspects of performance when you're trying to find a solution that makes sense. And you know what you just heard is sort of the mantra that I'm also preaching is it's not just performance. It is price performance for the solution you're trying to solve. It's why we tend to focus a lot in the mid-market, which is, you know, and, and to me, the mid-market is based on your need, not the size of your company. Um, but 
you need the enterprise features, you need reliability, but you need this ability to get your job done at a price you can afford. So if I don't need a million IOPS, I don't need to pay for a million IOPS. If I need 50,000 IOPS, I should pay for that level of performance. So it's looking at that mix of price and performance. And to me, the price is the per gig price. The performance is both your IOPS, your latency, those aspects of it. So I think we've covered a lot of these, so I'm not going to waste too much time talking about, yes, there are Fusion I.O. type cards, PCIe cards, one option. You look at the solid state storage systems, complete solutions, seen plenty of that today. Um, there's some boxes that get put sort of what I call the bump on the wire to try to accelerate performance. And then you get into the hybrid. And the hybrid, you saw tiering, we've talked about cash, different options for how to deliver that. The, the issue here is cost effectiveness. The hybrid does give you that capability. And done right, it gets you the capacity side of it as well. So both of those become very important as we look at it. You've even seen a picture that looks sort of like this earlier today. Um, what we did at Nexan is look at how do I move as far towards the cost of spinning disk and as high towards the performance of pure SSD, right? If you can find that optimal point, you've got a real interesting solution. And we do, did take the choice of cache as the use for SSD. We'll talk about it, I know, more on the panel, but we looked at it, how to get the best performance. Um, another term used earlier today, which I love, which is simple. How to make it simple to manage. Tiering adds a lot of complexity. The caching takes that complexity away from a management point of view. How to use the minimal amount of cash for the biggest bang for the buck, right? So back to that price performance. Right, to give you a number, we look in the, sort of the 50,000 plus IOPS, so 50, 60,000 IOPS for a solution. I know most applications will find that sufficient. Others won't. And if you need 500,000 a million, you heard some great solutions today that deliver that. In this mid-market, 50,000 IOPS meets most needs. The other thing you heard, which again, I'm 100% behind, is just slapping SSDs into a solution doesn't solve the problem, right? Existing storage solutions, adding SSD as a cache. If the controller wasn't architected for SSD, you're not going to get the optimal improvement. Adding SSD as a tier. Again, if the controller was not architected, if the system was not architected, numbers I've heard is you'll probably get a 2x performance improvement. You know, 2x, I can short stroke drives for 2x. Um, so again, make sure that the system is architected to use SSD and to grow with SSD. Again, the hybrid and the unified. So whether it's SAN, whether it's NAS, all right, that combination is getting to be more and more prevalent when you look at these new solutions. So we took that same approach. You know, SIFs, NFS, block, your, all of that as a choice. And then, again, how do I get under a dollar gigabyte? We can get down to about 65 cents a gigabyte by using our dense storage on the back end of this hybrid solution. So that's the approach we take, is take advantage of the density. Um, again, Tom earlier today talked about a petabyte in a rack. We get about 2.4 petabytes in a rack. So you have the density there with spinning disk, but the performance and the price when you combine them in this manner. Talked about unified, talked about scale, what wonderful builds. Um, and then you have to have the feature set, right? The enterprise class feature set. Again, you've seen this on some more slides, I don't want to belabor the point, but yes, replication. We do sync and async replication. You need snapshots, you need thin provisioning, you need all of the software and the system level solution to have an enterprise class device and you need the reliability. So we look at the reliability two ways. Yes, dual controllers, right? There can't be a single point of failure, all of those things. But we also look at the reliability on the back end with the spinning disk. So one of the things that really differentiates us is we put a lot of emphasis 
on the spinning disk side of reliability. So not only do we get the density, but we do a lot of work to reduce vibration, a lot of work to improve cooling, all the things that basically the environmentals that kill drives. And so by paying attention to those environmentals, we get much better reliability, much better longevity on the spinning disk side of it. Power efficiency, right? Real positive reason for using SSDs is power efficiency. We look at it on <clears throat> the spinning disk side as well. We have implemented AutoMade for many years as a way to take advantage of controlling power when you have this two petabytes of spinning disk. So as somebody mentioned, you know, your PowerPoint presentation that I don't access very often, your archive data, all of that. We have five different levels that you can set and will just automatically happen as far as when to slow down a drive, when to turn off a drive. We can even turn off entire 4U units um, down to about 15 watts if I don't need to access those. And it all comes back within less than 30 seconds. Um, if I slow down a drive, it's just a few seconds for it to speed up. So different ways to manage the power efficiency on these. Easy, simple, nice words. Um, but we also invested in the hardware technology, right? Because at the end of the day, I hate to say it, but just going and getting a JBOD unit is easy, it's cheap, I can go to Supermicro and throw drives into it, but the hardware does matter, right? <coughs> this is not a pure software game. And so we invested a lot on the hardware side. These drives here are in three different drive bays in this 4U. Each of these pulls out independently, right? How many of you have taken you know, 60 drives and tried to pull the whole thing out of the rack, hope it doesn't fall on you, and deal with it? So these are active drawers. I can pull out each drawer individually. We can put mixes of you know, SATA, SAS, drives into it. Again, the vibration, we control that by the frame that's been built around it. We control that by how the drives are put in. We control the fuel, the fuel, wow, airflow throughout the system. Um, all of that is part of the actual hardware engineering that went into this that makes an enormous difference when you're putting scale into a solution. So from our point of view, SSDs will continue to get more and more play. The price will come down, right? We're dealing with silicon, right? The, the price is going to come down. The reliability is going to go up. We're going to get cheaper MLC that's going to be as reliable as SLC over time. We're going to put more and more SSDs, whether it's into the back end, into other solutions. But we're going to make sure as we ride this curve that we hit that price performance mix to hit <clears throat> the majority of your solutions. I, I had an interesting conversation oh, about two years ago, maybe three now, with Paul Moritz about <clears throat> what's holding back virtualization. And what he felt was holding back being able to virtualize the entire data center <clears throat> was, yeah, I could buy a high-end, high IOP system for a set of my applications. But what I couldn't do was get that scale at a price performance ratio to virtualize everything else I have in my data center. And that's what was holding back virtualizing the data center. So we have to get that mix of price performance and scale to change the data center and change where we're going. We think we're heading down the right path with what we have today. Um, it will continue to change, and we'll see where things go with that. So with that, I'm within a minute. Lunch is coming up, so I know there are no questions. <laughs> so I thank you for your time and look forward to the panels this afternoon.